Hey guys, welcome to the Bin Zone. On today's video, we're going to be looking at the movie Source Code, breaking down the movie, the time, and the dimensional theories of this movie. And we're going to be diving a little bit into the quantum mechanics of the many worlds theory to get a better understanding of the overall story of Source Code, as well as the science fiction multiversal theory that this movie has and that this movie presents to us. So without further ado, let's dive into the movie. This movie starts off with the main character Coulter Stevens waking up in the body of Sean. He's dazed and confused and goes to the bathroom and he realizes his face is not his face. The wallet that he has is not his and he's trying to figure out what the hell is going on and the girl that was sitting across from him, Christina, is trying to calm him down. At this point, the movie's disoriented, we're disoriented and then a big explosion goes off and we see Coulter wakes up in a capsule and he's strapped and harnessed down. He's confused and trying to figure out what's going on. Then we have Colleen who's trying to calm him down and tries to get him to recall where he is, who he is, and who she is. And once he, go, once he follows these series of words and triggers, he starts to remember what's going on. And this gives us our first glimpse that this is not Coulter's first rodeo and whatever just happened. Because him and Colleen seem to have a rapport and they have a set of trigger words that will recall his memory. Therefore showing that this is not the first time he was inside the source code. But for some reason, he doesn't remember the previous times. It's fair to understand at this point that he's new to the source code. So this is probably his second or third visit. And he's not fully aware of just what the hell is going on just yet. Now, once he starts to realize what's going on, they waste no time in shoving him back into the source code. And now that he's back in the source code, he remembers what happens the first time he was there. And he realizes that the conversations tend to change depending on how he reacts. And now he seems to believe that this is some sort of virtual reality and this is a perfect recreation. And he's amazed at just how lifelike and real just everything is. This time when he goes to the bathroom, he locates the bomb. And he comes out the bathroom faking to be transit security trying to figure out who put the bomb there. And his attempt to try to figure out what's going on, the bomb explodes again. And he's back in his capsule. Now he wants to understand what the fuck is going on because he doesn't quite know what's going on now because in his mind yesterday he was in Afghanistan now today he's in this capsule going to this virtual reality. It's then that Colleen tells him that he's in a simulation that has been created out of a real life event. He needs to find out who put the bomb there so they can use that information to save lives outside of the simulation. Now when Coulter goes back into the source code he starts to believe that Christina is a real person and not just the simulation. Coulter goes to work and tries to figure out who placed the bomb there and he's profiling pretty much anybody and then he notices a guy acting normal so Coulter follows him off the train and then he follows him around to the bathroom and then comes to find out the guy is just someone who has motion sickness so after Coulter confronts him and the bomb still goes off he suspected the wrong guy however in suspecting the wrong guy the eight minutes have gone by and the train exploded however he's not shot out of source code and that brings us to a very interesting thing because source code at this point, remember, it's eight minutes of an it's an eight minute simulation of a past event. And once you go past that eight minutes, you automatically recall it back into the capsule. But this time he doesn't go back. And that gives us a glimpse of what could be. At this point, I'm starting to understand that source code is not just a simulation. The source code is a gateway to an alternate universe in the multiverse of universes. Imagine it this way. Quantum, there's a quantum theory called the many worlds theory and in the many worlds theory it posits that the vibrations that create this universe don't just cease to exist. For example, when we make one decision or our intent or we do one thing, it doesn't change the fact that doing something else would have created a different path. So therefore, that different direction still exists and that creates the many world theory. Every action creates another action therefore doesn't eliminate the previous action and you have multiple incarnations of multiple universes in which instead of going left today you decide to go right what happens if you go straight instead of going left and right all these different variations create many different possibilities and many different multiverses or other universes in which you did go left or you did go right or you did go forward in this particular scene the body that cult is inhabiting the body of sean doesn't get blown up on the train therefore that creates an alternate reality in which he walked out the train and survived the explosion however he dies swiftly after because the guy retaliates pushes him on the track and he gets ran over by a train but then that creates another universe in which he got hit by a train as opposed to dying in the explosion and then you can see different variations of sean's life what if when he was a child 
if his mom didn't break hard enough, he got hit by a car and passed. Like these different variations happen and therefore the multiverse theory and the many worlds theory posits that there exist multiple versions of you and multiple realities that have done different choices. They're still you, but their life paths have gone different ways. After getting hit by the train, Coulter's mind has left the source code and is back in his capsule. However, because he didn't die in the explosion, his mind is a bit disoriented and he's going cold in his capsule and he can't hear Colleen, which is interesting because normally when his mind goes back, he's back to normal. However, now because the way he exited source code isn't similar to how he's normally exited, his mind doesn't seem to understand what's going on and now he's cold. This coldness isn't actually happening because as we know in the movie, his body can't feel anything, it's his mind. And that gives us an indication that the coldness is him dying in a sense because his mind is all disoriented and it's not connected. It's when he starts to reorient himself and understand and focus himself that his mind fights to stay alive, therefore he heats back up as though he fixed the capsule. However, even though the capsule, as we may put it, is not really a capsule, we come to realize the capsule itself is what his mind rationalizes it is in because you have to understand Coulter's mind is hooked up to machines because it's hooked up to machines it's not oriented the way it's supposed to so it doesn't feel right but for him to rationalize what's going on he puts himself in a capsule and that way his mind is able to process what's going on and not shut down on him it's then that Dr. Rutledge tells him that trying to save the people in the simulation is pointless because it's a simulation they're already dead they don't exist and he shows him proof and he explains that the source code itself is not time travel. It is an alternate reality that exists for only 8 minutes of Sean's last moments as though an echo of his memory. Now, the fact that they address that it's an alternate reality is fascinating in the movie because they understand that the alternate realities exist. However, they're limited in scope because they believe it only lasts 8 minutes. But remember, when the train blew up, the 8 minutes passed and Coulter aka Sean lived longer than the 8 minutes so therefore that reality is able to extend a bit more. When Coulter goes back in there and tries to get the gun, that ends pretty horribly and he gets blown up. After that fails, Coulter sent back in there and now his mind is racing. So when he's back in source code, he tells Christina to check on information about Captain Coulter Stevens and he lies and says that's an old friend. At this point, he's still trying to solve what's going on in the train but also trying to get understanding of where he actually is. Because remember, at this point, Coulter Stevens' mind is inside Sean's body. However, because it's an alternate reality, there must exist another Coulter Stevens. So he's trying to contact himself and find out information about himself and how he ended up in the source code program per se. And when Christina comes back with the information and tells him that Captain Coulter Stevens was killed in action two months ago, Coulter can't believe it. And that's because according to him, he's still inside the capsule in the real world. However, the bomb goes off and he fades back into the capsule and he has memories of the war. It's kind of come back to me. He's a little fuzzy. So now back in the capsule, he asks Colleen if he's dead and she avoids answering him. However, she does tell him that part of his brain's alive and it's hooked up to computers. And once he begins to understand this, the capsule itself begins to shift. Now, remember, the capsule is a fragmentation of his mind. So whatever he sees and thinks, that's how his mind processes it. So now that he realizes that he's not dead or, or not fully alive either his mind sh shifts the capsule and makes it a different it's still a holding area but it's a lot bigger and different because that's now how his mind is expanding as he begins to understand the greater ramifications of what's going on around him now at this point dr rutledge is starting to get sick of culture shit and tells him go back into the source code and do your job but Coulter rebuffs him by saying, I called you within the source code. And that's when we get another explanation about the multiverse and the different variations of the characters. Dr. Rutledge lets him know that even if he did call him within the source code, he would never receive that because he's calling an alternate universe's Dr. Rutledge. So the Dr. Rutledge he knows will never receive this phone call even if Dr. Rutledge within the source code receives the phone call because it's just different. They're just different people. Granted, they're the same person, but they exist in different dimensions, different universe. So while they're the same people, 
their experiences are very similar at that minute details it's not the same dr rutledge therefore you're not calling me because you're making that phone call in another dimension which Coulter has to get his mind wrapped around to get a better understanding of the quantum mechanics of the many world theory. Now, Coulter keeps going back into the source code and keeps going back and back and back and back, trying to figure out just what the fuck is going on. And the more he goes back in there, the more like he gets a better understanding of what he needs to do, how to figure it out. And then now the second to final time that he goes back into the source code, he finds out what is happening. He finds out who the person is, who the bomber is, and it's Derek. And at this point, he follows Derek to his van and tries to stop him. Derek kills him, and we realize Derek is just an apocalyptic maniac. He kills him. He also kills Christina. And when he snaps out of the source code, he tells Rutledge and Colleen who the bomber is. And they use that information in their main universe to capture Derek. At this point, source code is a success. They have used it to actively find the bomber. They've used it as best as they could, and it's a glaring success. However, in Coulter's mind, the people within the source code are real. And in Dr. Rutledge's mind, they're not real. It's a simulation. But we know at this point, they're not going to the same simulation over and over again. Every time he enters source code, he enters a different dimension, a different universe. We can see source code or we can imagine source code as being this sort of transformative device that transfers his consciousness into the body of Sean throughout the multiverse. Instead of being a simulation per se, it's a transport device that vibrates him into a different universe. Dr. Rutledge doesn't know that, but Coulter strongly believes that these people are real. Even though in his mind he's going back to save Christina, he's not actually going back to save the Christina because those Christinas have died. Actually, one of them lived. The one that survived was the one that saw him get hit by the train because remember, she stepped out of there. So in his mind, he's going to save the one that keeps blowing up even though you can't do that. It's not a time machine. Remember, he's not going in time traveling. He's traversing universes. So therefore, all the Christinas he's known are dead, blown up. But Dr. Rutledge isn't hearing that and he's like, you know what, you're not going back to a missing success. And he tells Colleen that, you know, they're going to wipe Coulter's memory and this is a success. But Coulter reaches out to Colleen and reasons with her to send him back in there one more time so that he can save the people there and stop the secondary detonation device. So she agrees, but with the stipulation also that once he's in there and after the eight minutes, just pull the plug. Whether he lives or dies is irrelevant just in the connection to the alternate universe after the eight minutes. So Kota goes in there, does what he needs to do, saves the day, stops the bombs from going off, and she pulls the plug after eight minutes. But the source code doesn't end. Kota's mind doesn't snap out of it. He actually lives past eight minutes and he goes on to be with Christina in that universe, showing us that this is not just a temporary thing. When you enter the source code, you are traversed back into another universe. And when your mind dies within that universe, you go back into your main body like Coulter has been doing. But now that she unplugged him, Coulter now became Sean. He's now successfully traversed universes and he's living in that universe as Sean. And that goes past the eight minutes. So another thing that's very interesting is in that universe, he also emails Colleen to let her know, I am Coulter Stevens. This is how things are going on. If I ask for your help, please help me out because he's there. And Colleen walks in there and she sees Coulter's body in his breathing machine. Now in this universe, because the bomb never goes off, they don't activate source code with him and she never meets him to make that connection yet because we know they're going to do it. So now in this universe, Colt, there exists two Coulter Stevens one that's hooked up to the source code machine and one that inhabits Sean's body. Granted, while they don't have the same physical manifestations because he is Sean, he exists in Sean's body now. And effectively, Coulter Steven has replaced Sean and killed Sean, even though Sean was going to die anyway. He's essentially replaced Sean's mind by inhabiting his body. So at this point, Sean in this universe no longer exists because Coulter has taken his mind. Even though his physical is still there, Sean's mind is no longer there. And now we create, and now Coulter inhabited and successfully traversed into a whole new universe. If you guys have ever seen the show The Away, this is very similar as to what happens when they traverse universes. Their consciousness inhabits another body and they kind of supersede and take over that body. But anyway, guys, that's my explanation for source code. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already and if you like this movie if you really do check out the oa because it's about the same premise of jumping universes and consciousness inhabiting other bodies it's a great show 
definitely check it out. It's on Netflix. But guys, until next time, binge on.